All right, everyone, welcome to the July 2023 reports interest group <laughs> meeting. <laughs> uh, today, our special guest is Taryn McKenna from Pines, and she's going to be talking about adding data sources to the reporter. So without further ado, I will pass things over to Taryn. Take it away. <laughs> uh, looks like I don't have the ability oh, to share my screen. This is always a thing. <laughs> uh, okay, try now. Okay. Yep, that works. Okay. Awesome. Now I just need to find the right screen. Okay. Does everybody see the field mapper notes page? Um, let's see. I'm so used to using Google. I'm not used to using Zoom. Um, the I can't see the chat. So if anyone has any um, questions or anything, uh, I can try to answer them. But please go ahead and speak up if you have them. Uh, well, I can I monitor the chat too. Okay, you know, cool. Taryn. Um, oh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Taryn. Uh, I work for Pines. I'm the Pines program manager. Um, and I've been working with Evergreen uh, for about hmm, almost 14 years now. Um, and uh, so since the early days, um, but I've been working more, I was at a library for the first few years, so I've been more on the um, training and, and staff support side uh, for the last 10 years. Um, I'm all completely self-taught, um, so what I will tell you today will probably not be complete, but I will share what I have learned about adding um, things to the field mapper. Uh, I'm going to start by um, talking about something simple, which is just adding additional fields to an existing table. And so this is kind of getting into a little bit of development along with just reports, but I wanted to use it as a way to talk about what the field mapper actually looked like. So um, I'm going to open up uh, just as a um, tip, you can always uh, take a look at what your field mapper looks like by going to your domain slash reports slash fm underscore and then capital idl dot xml and that will actually pull up your live uh, field mapper that you currently have running on your server so whatever server you're looking at if you have different test servers I am looking at one of my test servers which is Taryn dash testbox.gapines.org. Um, so I'm going to pull up that one. And so the first uh, example here, uh, I um, this is something that we actually did in my library locally. So we wanted to be able to use the different library systems logos um, in action triggers and in um, their library information pages and things like that. Um, since we are, we're a consortium of 51 different library systems. And so I wanted to add a field to the um, organizational unit setting page to store the name of that library logo. I didn't go so far as to create an upload process or anything, which is why I haven't submitted it to Evergreen. Um, that would be the next step. But I did add a field that just stores the text. And then I can access that from other places in Evergreen. So um, I've referenced a Git branch here. So I'll open up that. Um, and that, if you click on the top row, it tells you the different things that I changed. So um, first of all, I had to actually add the field to the database. Um, there's two SQL files here. One is um, if you were installing from scratch, um, you I added uh, this library logo, library underscore logo field to the existing actor.org unit table to uh, add a new field from um, to that if through a blah, I'm sorry, through a new install, that's where it would add it from. And then I also created an upgrade uh, file. So if somebody was up upgrading an existing Evergreen installation, they could run the upgrade file and it would add that um, new 
column to the existing table. Um, so then I had to uh, update the field mapper. So the field mapper is what um, connects basically the database on the back end to the interface. So the field mapper makes it accessible. And what I did there was I found the existing um, class, each kind of field mapper um, quote unquote table uh, is called a class. And uh, I found the one for the, um, the organizational units, which is class ID AOU. And I added that field there. So if I go to the actual live, field mapper here, and I look for the actor org unit table. Um, this is the class for that. And you can see down at the bottom, this is where I added the library logo. So you can see these are all of the other uh, fields that are available on that um, in that class. Um, just a little note, if you're not familiar with the field mapper, um, so the class ID AOU, that's actor org unit, um, that's uh, the, the just the like unique ID of this class. The controller, uh, this is where it defines what can use this class. So C store, which is mostly used on the back end, and then PCRUD, which is used in a lot of places um, within uh, Angular, especially, and AngularJS, um, those can use this source. The um, OILS object field mapper, um, that's how it's referenced within the field mapper. So if you have one, um, it just defines you know, how it's referenced internally. And then the table name here, this is where it, where it actually oops, connects um, this class to the actual table that's in the database. So the table that's in the database is in the actor schema and it's called actor.org underscore unit. Um, the reporter label is what it looks like in the reports engine. So if you go to create a report, this is the report source. Um, I don't know what all of these different fields mean. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure exactly what the field safe means. Um, so then when you get down in the fields, um, the fields um, section here, it just the primary ID, this is telling you how the database um, sorts it. So there's an ID field, which is a unique ID. And this sequence line tells the tells you how to tells the database how to if there's a new row added, how to give it the next ID in the row. And then each field is identified. So the reporter label is what shows up in the actual reporter. Um, the name is the field name, um, and this will match what is in the actual database. Um, the persist virtual, I believe, has to do with caching, but I can't swear to that. And then the data type, uh, there are, are, are usually they're usually going to match what's in the database, like text or integer. Um, but sometimes there are special data types like org unit that's that are used with just within Evergreen. So if it's an org unit data type, it knows to treat um, you know the drop down list or whatever selector as an org unit um, type. Um, now the ones that say link, if you scroll down to the next section under links, um, those are references to other. Uh, classes in the field mapper. So like billing address, for example, uh, the name is billing address and the reporter data type is link. So if I go down here and find billing address, it's saying that this org unit has a has a single billing address. The key is what links the tables together. So the billing address key gets stored in the uh, AOU or in, in the other table, in the, sorry, in the actor org unit table. And then it's mapped to the AOA uh, class and the field mapper. Is everybody okay? 
I can't tell if anybody, if I have lost everyone. I'm or... following. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody speak up if I'm being, if I'm too confusing um, or if I'm uh, too being too simple too. Um, so um, what I did here, I didn't, when I added the library logo, this was a super simple example because all I'm doing is adding a text field. I first added it into that actor org unit table through SQL, and then I referenced it here. So now here uh, it will be accessible to the reporter. So if I go log into my client, and you are welcome to access this. This is a public test server, um, terran testboxgapinesorg slash eg slash staff. And it has the Concerto database installed. So I'm just logging in as admin. Uh, demo123 is the password. Um, if first I'll go ahead and go look at the org unit. And so I can see now this library logo field has been added. So I can go add different logos and these logos would have to, you know, are actually be somewhere and I'd have to have code to reference them. So I'm just adding text right now. Can I ask what you, um, mm -hmm. where you reference that or, or uh, what you've used that for, Taryn? And I'm sure, sorry if you um, I'll said show that. you on, um, yeah, we actually use it in our action triggers and on our website. So like if you go to um, the library information pages, uh, library, let's find a, So here's a, one of our library systems. So it shows up um, on the library information page. And it also shows up when a patron logs into their account. So if I go to my preferences uh, where we have information about the home library, um, my home library is the state. So I have the Pines logo show up there. Um, it shows up there. And then in the action triggers, we've upgraded to um, all I'm HTML. With those action <laughs> triggers. <laughs> um, I don't have an example handy of what the action triggers look like, but um, well, actually, maybe I do. Let's see. Hopefully, I have nothing embarrassing in my email. <laughs> Uh, Before I do one, I just found one in my inbox. Uh, oh, um, I thought I had some really handy, but <laughs> I think I have them bookmarked. The okay. ones that you sent out. But oh, I'll okay. Try and find that. Sure. Uh, where did that go? All right, what's your cursor and what's mine? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I took my cursor off the screen. All right. That's the mock-ups that uh, you had linked out at one time before. Did you, okay, did you? Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, I can't see the chat. Did oh, sorry. Chat? Yeah, I put it in chat. <laughs> okay. Um. I have way too many folders in my. <laughs> Here's one. I'll put one in here too. So this is an actual one. Um, so this was one that we converted to HTML. We created a. Um, we had a new user welcome notice already, and we added a follow-up one that goes out two weeks after the initial one. And so it's just HTML, and then we modify what content they get depending on what kind of permission group they have. So like digital only um, patrons will get information about how they can upgrade their card to get more access, and then their logo shows up with the library info down at the bottom. 
So pretty. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Where was I? Okay. So um, the library logo is there. Um, and then, of course, you'd have to do some other stuff to actually get it to show up um, uh, in um, the uh, website, in the OPAC, and in the action triggers. But for reporters, for the reporter, uh, if you go in now and create a new template and you choose the organization unit way down there somewhere organizational unit source the logo automatically comes in there since it's defined in the field mapper now so you don't have to do anything else why you would want to report on library logos, I don't know, but <laughs> that's just an example of make any... sure the URL is right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or to see who hasn't given me one. <laughs> um, uh, or if there's yeah typos or anything. So that's the first example I had on my um, handout. Uh, any questions about that so far? It's pretty straightforward, I think. Okay, so the um, next example I have is um, creating a new view through the field mapper um, that isn't actually tied to anything on the database side. So um, you do have to know how to use SQL. Um, and what you would do is figure out the SQL that you want to create your view. and then you would plug it into the field mapper. So this only involves changing the field mapper and nothing else. Um, so what you would do is you would create a brand new class um, and you can name it, give it whatever ID that's not already being used you want. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, I copied a lot from some of the other classes. Uh, so I actually created a really simple um, SQL that this is taking um, from the existing actor.user table um, on the back. And I looked at how uh, that was defined. So if I go over to here, I might pull up actor user, that's AU. So I looked at this and this is the entire ILS user table. <laughs> So I decided to create a view that is just for active juvenile accounts. Um, so that when I create reports, um, if I need to do a lot of reports for youth services, for example, I don't have to add a bunch of extra filters. I just have this new view that I'm creating already that is just active juveniles. Um, and so I looked at the existing AU uh, class and I created this new one that is a modified version of that um, as far as the fields and stuff go. Um, and the first part um, is mostly what we talked about already. Let me pull it up in here. I think it might be easier to read. <clears throat> so I created a new one called AUJ. Um, it does not have the table name link in the class because I'm not linking to an actual table. Um, I'm using SQL to kind of create a fake view on the fly. So um, my SQL select is just saying which fields that I want from what the existing table, which is already in the back, actor.user, uh, where juvenile equals true and active equals true. So that SQL is added to this OILS persist source definition. So it's saying the source for this class is this SQL call. Um, and then I define my fields just like we did before. You can add links in there. Um, so I linked the permission group over to the uh, profile class. I linked the home library over to the org unit class. Um, and then I, um, because I want it to be accessible um, you know, through permacred calls, um, I added, uh, I had to add a, at least the retrieve permission. So there's other things you could 
do um, in here as well, but I wanted to keep it really simple. So that's basically it. Um, just add the SQL line. Um, oops, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Close that one. Um, so this is the extent of all I had to do here. So once I added that, and of course, after you change anything in the field mapper, you have to um, run autogen and restart services and all that good stuff too. Um, but I've already added it to the server so that we don't have to wait <laughs> for that. Um, Taryn, so what, uh -huh. did, you, did you only add this to the version of the IDL that, that uh, the reporter looks at, or did you also add it to like the main... Ideal. I added it. I added it to all of them. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think yeah. you have to for like upgrades and stuff. But There's different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For the, uh, for an up. Um, yeah. So um, what, oops, let me find the um, get branch. Oops, here it goes. So here I added it to the main one. Um, and then for, I forget um, for upgrades. I think you do. I don't remember if, if an upgrade pulls from this and I think, I think pushes it, it out to the others or if you have to do something else. No, I think I think it does. I think it auto copies it in, in both places okay. that it needs to be. OK. Um, if not, <laughs> then you can always copy it over manually. But I think it should I think it's supposed to pull it from there. Um, so once that's there and everything is restarted, um, then what that does is um, it doesn't appear anywhere except in the reporter. So if I go and change this, I created, since I created a whole new class and I called it, um, where's my branch? I called it reporter label ILS user active juvenile one, because since I'm doing two different examples, um, if I change this to that, change the source, ILS user active juvenile one, that pulls it up and it has, I only identified a few fields for this example to keep it simple. Um, but you can tell by, since I added those two links to the home library and perm group, it automatically pulls those in for me. So all I had to do was identify the appropriate links, and now I can run reports um, based on that. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, to me, it's more simple than I uh, I anticipated. <laughs> Good. Um, you know, and it can get a lot more complicated, especially if you have really complicated SQL. Um, Getting yeah, your SQL was, right is the most important part. I was going to ask you, um, like, uh, is there a point at which it's like, oh my God, I'm doing like way too many joins and the SQL, I mean, the SQL gets like a little bit bogged down? <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't re usually do that really crazy of SQL. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm sure there is a point, <laughs> <laughs> but um, um. One of the, one of the nice things about this, though, is when you it, since the reporter is limited on since the well, a couple of things, the reporter can't do certain types of can't create certain types of SQL right on its own, and it's really confusing to, to figure out the nullability. Um, so, if you have something that you're going to be using over and over, if you do it this way. Um, then you can create your SQL as complicated as you need it to be, as long as the SQL works, and then the reporter will be able to use the results of it. So even though the reporter couldn't create this on its own, I mean, the reporter, for this example, the reporter could create it on its own, but if you had a really complicated one that the reporter couldn't do on its own, you could do it this way by adding it to the field mapper or by creating a view on the database side, and that way your report the reporter would be able to use it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, so, um, so anyway, uh, let me go back. So the other, the next example I have is going to have the same result as this, um, but it adds a few more layers to it so that the new view could be used in other places besides just the reporter. 
Um, so close that one. So this one, I did basically the same example, except I'm creating the view on the database side instead of on the SQL side, or instead of in the field mapper side. So you still have to add it to the field mapper, but if you start by using that exact same SQL, but creating a view with it um, on the, not the exact same SQL, but creating the exact same, um, this part of it's the same. Um, if you create a view uh, and that is gonna remain permanently on the database side and you, um, create the view using whatever SQL you need for your results. Um, and then you add that to the field mapper. Um, and what I've called that one in the example AUJ2. Um, so it's very similar. The only difference is that um, you don't put the SQL in the field mapper side. You just point to the SQL you created or the view, new view you created on the database side as if it were a real table. Um, so even though a view is like a virtual table, as far as the field mapper is concerned, it thinks it's just a regular table. So um, this uh, is pointing to the new view that I created. And the rest of it is all um, almost exactly the same. Um, actually, it is exactly the same, I think. And then if I pull that one up in here, you can see it looks exactly the same. So the main benefit to doing the second path uh, takes slightly more work, um, but now that it's a view on the database side, it could be accessed from other like, um, you know, from Perl or from, you know, AngularJS or, or sorry, or Angular, or um, any place that you needed to, besides the reporter to access it. So that gets auto updated too. Like if they you add a new account, that's a juvenile account that'll it'll automatically get pulled in there into the view. Well, it will it will through the field mapper too. Okay. Because it's um yeah either way, um because it's it's a virtual view either way. It's not a real tape. It's not a real. I I'm familiar oh. with views, but I'm like I don't know. This is all magic. <laughs> yeah, <to me. laughs> it's yeah. I I'm I'm not an expert on them for sure. Uh, uh, um. And I don't know if there are um, if there are performance benefits to creating on the database side. Like on the database side, if you can like perhaps add indexing to make it uh, you know search better, you know far faster retrieval and searching or something like that. Um, I would assume that there are more benefits to adding it to the database side than just. Well, I think I've heard I've that. Um... It might actually be uh, better for performance to do the SQL in the IDL because oh. um, it's only running that SQL, uh, you know, when on demand. Yeah, on demand. And the other, the other way, it's like having to, you know, do the updates in multiple places. Like whenever oh, you. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Jeff says something. Virtual okay. IDL views where SQL is defined as. as are also accessible from Perl, Angular, just as any other IDL object. So yeah, I, okay. okay. So I guess so the there's advantage not the... there is that you can consult them in the code. Um, yeah. But I don't, but there may not necessarily be like a performance. Yeah. Benefit. Um. So if if yeah if you're just doing something that you just need reports on, adding it to the field map is fine. But it since it's not, you know. Um, and if it's no, something that's not, I misunderstood what Jeff wrote here. Uh, she he said that um, he said that if you write the SQL in there, you can also access it with Perl and Angular and it, through the field all other stuff. Um, I guess that's you, why you're adding the C store. Um, like you're giving access to C to it through C store, so. But you can't use IDL views in SQL queries, such as you're doing. Uh, you're reporting with SQL, and you can't reuse an IDL only view in another view query. That make okay. So yeah, if you were 
Okay. So you can't like link them together. Kind yeah. Of that makes sense. All right. So if you're, yeah. So for the links, like you couldn't link here to another, another one. view. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But if you created it on the back side, then you could. Yeah. So, okay. That makes sense. That's good to know. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, we uh huh. Uh, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yep. Okay, my headset is being crummy. Um, so I was saying in chat that I had tried doing this too, and um, I had trouble with spacing. And Beth was asking me to elaborate on that. So can I show mine real quick and show how I failed at it for a teachable moment? <laughs> Do I need to stop sharing? Let's see. I yeah, I think sharing. it's only one person at a time. Let's see. Um... I don't see the, oh, here it is. Okay, okay. go ahead, Tiffany. Here, let's see if mine works. Share. Okay, um, can you guys see that? Is it is it too small? It's pretty small. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, I gotta remember, I don't remember how to make it bigger. You should just be able to do control plus. Zoom in. I think. Is that is that happening? Is that doing a thing? Yeah, that's working. Control. Plus, better. Yes. Is that better. Okay. So, so what I was trying to do with this is, um, we were trying to export um, like closed acquisitions inter, it, not interfaces, invoices, um, to a vendor, and so I just wanted to basically like use a query and do this like in a report, um, and this query, you know, from select all the way down here, this works. Right. Like if I just plug this in, you know, and do a query in the database, it works fine. The running this from the reporter, the reporter sees it, um, but it fails <laughs> because I cannot get the spacing correct. Like if, if this is like this, it fails on me. So like the, or maybe not spacing, I don't know what the right word for it is, but yeah. So it's very particular about it and I haven't succeeded with it. So there's that. <laughs> as a, as a, uh, I guess a, a warning. And I can't tell any difference from the other ones that I, you know, I kind of based it off of. It seems like it looks right, but it just does not like it. So I just figured I would, I would share that as a cautionary tale. Hopefully you guys have better so, look at it. Um, is what it, is the what is the um, C data thing around block around it doing? I have no idea. I stole it from something else. I don't know what it does. Let's see C data. Because in my in my tests, I've just started with select. It's not wrapped in anything, but there may be a reason why. I think this might be where I started from this action trigger user log. Like I stole it from here because this was like a larger, you know, kind of query thing. Uh huh. So I just kind of stole it. From I that. actually don't know what C data even means. I don't know what that does. And like, there's another one. So. I I would try I would try it without. Maybe it's if you're doing multiple selects in the same thing, maybe that blocks them together. I have no idea what or it multiple, is. multiple commands. I remember my, my example is doing us just a single, single one. Yeah. So like what I you... remember Jason Boyer told me, he was like, yeah, it, it, it is particular. And so I was like, okay, cool. But I don't know if it's the C data that makes it particular or what. Where did it go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is mine. So I don't know. But I thought I would share. Um, C data sections are used to, okay. In XML, C data sections are used to escape blocks of text that contain characters that would otherwise be recognized as markup characters. Oh. So, so that should be fine then. Unless like, you don't, do you have any, well. And so. If and you I were, so if you were doing like greater than less than signs in your SQL, 
then you would need to have that block around there. But you may not have to have it around there for the one you're doing. Also, like when I would run the report um, and the report would, um, it would fail, I think. Um, and you would see in the, you know, it'll give it like the error or whatever, like why it failed. And I could see that it was mushing things together. Mm. Like, and so it was failing, you know, like I would see that there's no space in between this and this. So I would just like constantly be like, okay, I need a space there or I don't need a space there. Well, and I just got frustrated with it. I don't think the spaces matter. Um, okay, Jeff, Jeff in, um, I know you can't see it now since you're presenting, um, but he said in chat, um, basically the same thing. It's basically a, escaping special characters. Okay. Um, so you would have to. Yeah. Um, I see. And, I okay. See you, Jeff. He okay. said, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I can share so, my, my file somewhere. Um, <laughs> so have you tried, but the SQL, if you do it on the, on the database side works fine. Yep. So the e I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, you could just put it, you know, do, do like my second example and go ahead and just create the view, um, which is um, basically just taking all that SQL that you wrote and um, adding the yeah, create view and then give it a view name as, and then plugging in the SQL that you created. And that will create the view on the database side. And then you can just reference it here as if it were a table. And that might that would might save you some hassle. Yeah, I could try that. Yeah. So well because um, it may be it may be that the things like spaces are being finicky because of the C data escaping, like maybe it's trying to escape the special spaces as special characters or something like that too. Jeff is asking if you have uh, an idea, a modified ideal that you could share that you could test with. I think so. This is on my test <laughs> box, so. Do you have it up in, a, in, a, in the Pines Git? No, I don't. Because yes. it was it was um it was like just a customization I was using for that particular project. You so could um, you I could mean, plop it fine. you could plop it up into a working branch, like I did with mine. Yeah. On um, like an evergreen working branch. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Didn't work. No commit. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I can do that. I would be um once I um put it up somewhere. Um, I can put it on the listserv and I'd be interested, you know, like what you guys cool. find out about it. Cause I, I, I gave up, like I got frustrated with persnicketing. Yeah. I would, space. <laughs> I would try creating, creating it as a, as a view on the Postgres side and then accessing it as if it were a table from here. Yeah. And I would yeah. bet that that would work fine. Yeah. Should have built this as a new dev crossover event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to add my my notes and everything else I learned from uh, chat <laughs> to uh, the new devs wiki page. Yeah, um, there's a there's a page started that I referenced um, uh, in the um, meeting page for this. That uh, so there's a field mapper page started wow. on the new devs page, but it needs to be flushed out more. Um, okay, so I have one more example. Um, if Tiffany, if you can stop sharing, there we go. Um, so then um, to take it a step further, I wanted to uh, create a brand new table. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, I didn't have, I ran out of time when I was creating these. Um, if you were actually going to create something to um, push up to Evergreen, um, you would also need to create, um, you add um, the, uh, sorry, my brain. Um, you, uh, in addition to the upgrade file that I created here, you would also have to um, uh, add, add it to the 
actors schema or whatever relevant schema. Um, so for new installs, it would be loaded rather than just for an upgrade. Um, but I ran out of time on adding that to the example. So, um, and I will I'm gonna update that note too before and add Jeff's note about linking from one. class to another. Um, so my last example, um, I wanted to show the basic process for actually creating a brand new table. Um, so rather than just to view a, a whole new table that could be accessed by other parts of the system and uh, through the reporter. So on the branch here, there's a few more parts to it. Um, so I had to, of course, create a SQL command first to create an actual table. So um, I took this as a very simplified version of one of the things that we're doing internally in Pines. So we have a, um, we're doing a student card project with a lot of schools. And so we're using some of the, um, we added some tables into Pines to track school districts and schools and uploads and things like that. So this is just one little table, a simplified version of a table that we created if, within Pines. Um, so since this was a whole new module, uh, I created a new schema for student card. Then I created a table for that schema, student card under student underscore card dot school. Um, this is just has a few fields in it or, you know, a real one would have a lot more probably. Um, so it's just basic SQL for that. Um, I also created a new permission group um, and inserted that into the permission uh, list. And, uh, and then I added that to uh, the global admin um, permission group um, as part of this process as well. So in a real example, you'd also want to, this is, I just created the upgrade file here. You'd also want to add it, um, add a schema file and add it to the, uh, add the permission group to the seed data as well. Um, so once the table and permission were created on the database side, um, then I added it to the field mapper. So I created a whole new class um, and I called it SCS. And since that's a real table on the back end, um, I mapped it to the real table and I added it to the reporter through by calling it student card school um, with the thought that we'd have student card districts and student card uploads and that sort of thing as well. Um, do all the different steps that we did for the others, um, you know, give it a sequence, give it, you know, specify the ID, give it the reporter field names. You can specify if you want that to be required or not here. Um, and then you can add, you know, links. Um, so I wanted to add, uh, associate each school with a particular org unit. So um, I used the special org unit data type um, and uh, linked it to the org unit table here, or org unit class rather. Um, and then since I added a new permission called admin student cards, then I specified uh, here that the permission is needed to do create, retrieve, update, or delete. Um, and there's different places. Uh, permissions get used in a lot of different ways, but I, you know, I did it here just for clarity, um, so that if you're just looking at the field mapper, you can tell it immediately what permissions are required um, by anything accessing it through the field mapper. Um, so then also the last thing, uh, last two things actually, um, I wanted to add it to an interface um, through Angular. Um, whoops. So I found the, I wanted to add it to the server administration page. Um, and to do that, uh, you just have to add a link basically um, to uh, the menu. And then um, for the serve for the 
um, server admin uh, menu. This is this part is optional, but it gives you more flexibility. Um, you could just add it through that other file, through the menu file, and it would work. But if you add it into the routing module as well, um, then you can do things like um, um, control the field order that you want the fields to appear in. Um, and that that controls the order both on the grid and in the uh, modal pop-up when you're editing. Um, you can also do things like um, make certain fields read only and stuff on this as well. Um, so what that looks like when you actually pull it up. So by adding it to the menu, it created a new menu item here. Um, you can see it's in the order that I specified. Um, and it automatically, uh, because it's using, it's leveraging the um, admin component or admin, what is it called? Admin page component. Um, sorry, what, what word is it? It's leveraging the basic admin page component. Um, so it automatically pulls in the selector, um, filters, um, and that sort of thing. So I already created some, but if I, since I added the permission and I gave the permission to this account, um, I can go ahead and add. And that automatically creates it and I can delete or whatnot. And then that also adds it to the reporter. So if I go down and create a new template, I called it student card school. Let's scroll way down. And so that's the initial fields that I created. And then I linked it to an associated library. So that automatically gives me access to everything that's in the org unit uh, class as well. So any questions nice. about that? <clears throat> Probably going to have to watch that part again. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, yeah, um, I will, I do have, um, you know, the, the Git branches for these. I created working branches for each example um, just as a basic reference. And I will add notes to the new devs wiki as well um, for these. Um, there's also, there's other things you can do as well. Um, that I didn't make a note of here, but um, like if you, if it's a view that, or a reports um, source that you're going to be using a lot, uh, you can add a line to the field mapper that tells it to list it under the core sources rather than having to scroll down to the non-core sources. Um, you can I also, think. sorry, go ahead. No, uh, I was just going to say, you know, you can, you can do that with, ex, you know, the, if there's an existing non-core source and you just want to bump it up to core sources or rename it or anything, you can do that in the field mapper as well. Or if there's a core source that you really don't want your people to be using, <laughs> you can bump it down to the non-core sources or change the name to make it something that they won't want to pick. Like, don't use this source. And I believe all the config for actually I know all the config for the simple reports reporter sources are also in the IDL so you could do some configuration that way as well add new sources there. Yeah, just tell it that it's a you are going to the simple reports interface. <laughs> I think yeah here's here's the simple reporter UI so that's that's a little bit more complicated of a sequel than I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's no spaces in it. <laughs> yeah, and Tiffany, yeah, this this doesn't have that C data stuff around it. So and they're not they're not doing anything that's using special characters. So they don't need to have that. Um and I don't, you know, there's some other things like field groups. Like I I'm not I haven't used these. There's a lot more 
you know, I feel like I, I only have scratched the surface on what I've learned um, and used. Um, but at least yeah. hopefully that will give everybody a starting point. I think that this has been very, very helpful. Thank oh, you, good. Taryn. Good. Um, does anybody else have any? Um, oh, I see now I can see chat over here. Let's see, is there anything else in? <laughs> yeah, I may have mangled what Jeff was saying earlier about uh, views versus, you know, SQL views versus database level views, but <laughs> at any rate. <laughs> I'll read, I'll read through it. So when I update the uh, wiki, I'll include that information. Um, and I did uh, reference at the bottom of that uh, field mapper page, the wiki page is here. Um, uh, and you can see it's, it's labeled a work in progress. Um, and uh, like there's notes on things we want to add. Um, and so I will add some examples. Um, here we have, um, I might add them actually to the how to. Um, let's see, we have a, uh -huh. we have a create a report view here, which is also not, hasn't gotten very far. <laughs> so um, I can add, um, add my notes to this page to flesh it out too. Oh, Jeff saying that he thinks that the simple reports uh, SQL is wrapped in the C data block, but it, it's not, sh it wouldn't show there because it's oh. the Firefox XML rendering of That's it, true. Not, the, not the raw, yeah. the raw SQL. Um, let's see. Or yeah, the raw XML. If, uh... <laughs> Oh, wait, no, that's still. The... I'm not sure if I'm not sure if this is still, even though I'm looking at raw Firefox, might still be hiding it. Yeah, it looks like it's still. Oh, but that's in the. Uh... No, that's in comma to okay, doubt though. Mind. So never mind. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think Jeff's right. Okay. I didn't pull it up in an actual editor to look at. Okay. Um, does anyway. anybody have any? I think I've I've extended the the limits of my knowledge, but <laughs> if anybody has anything else, um, oh, bye, Susan. Um, any other questions? I can try to ask or pull anything up in the last few remaining minutes, or we can stop early. No, I think this was great, and I plan to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you. Um, just, a, just a couple of things. This is likely going to be my last reports interest group meeting before I disappear and have a baby <laughs> for <laughs> a few months. Um, so Elizabeth Davis from Pales will be taking over as the leader. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, so please, uh, please be nice to her. <laughs> she wasn't able to uh, come in to this meeting because she's on vacation this week, but um, she will be, you will be in good hands with her. And I look forward to seeing everybody in December or maybe not December, but maybe January. We usually don't have the meeting and because we're at the end of the month, we usually skip the December meeting, but <laughs> Yeah, in the new year. So hooray. <laughs> well, good good luck. I hope it goes well. Thank you. We'll be talking. Bye. Thank you, Taryn. Sure thing. Bye-bye. <laughs>